I know I've done these fermenting videos in the past, but I have so many sub new subscribers now that I just wanted to do another one to make sure anybody that's interested in it may, you know, see this. So this morning I went out and I uh, decided to pick some natapino peppers here. Um, I'm going to ferment the natapinos. We really we did them last year and we really loved them. And then my carrot bins, every couple days I go out and I actually thin them out some. I start by planting them pretty dense and then all summer long we, you know, kind of eat the thinnings. And then at the end we'll have a, a batch of big ones to pull that are left. So, you know, these are just the, um, you know, the ones that are kind of grown too close together. So that was that one bin there and I've got one more back here I'm going to grab a couple more out of just to get enough to do two jars. You can see the garden's like a jungle now. I'll be doing an update real shortly. So I grabbed a, a couple more carrots out of that bin. And yesterday I had picked beans and we froze some more of them from this bin. I was surprised how many beans we've had from it after the deer eating it back. But uh, I left a couple to uh, pick today for fermenting. And then I'm just going to grab a couple nice, uh, you know, dill seed flowers there so you know i got everything that i'm i'm gonna ferment in the basket and ready to go up in the house and get started now this is the kit last year that got me started on this and you know it's kind of one of those things you get hooked on and you'll do every year and it just comes with six lids for wide mouth jars a uh, a pounder there for like sauerkraut and stuff and then a vacuum pump to get the air out and then I also purchased some of these uh, glass stones, they call them. They're just weights for fermenting to keep everything submerged. And I'd highly recommend them if you, you know, want to get started. So I'll put some links to them down in the description. And I'm just going to start out by trying to, you know, wash everything the best I can with really hot water to make sure there's no uh, germs or anything left. In the meantime, my wife's got some sauce, fresh sauce cooking down for tonight on the stove, and it smells so good in here right now. But I got all the lids and everything washed, and in the end, I wound up having to take the little gaskets out just to be able to get them washed good underneath there, because, you know, I could see there was some crud there. So then it's a matter of putting them back in, and I'm going to start with the natapinos, and these are, you know, I don't know, in case you haven't heard of them before, they're a, uh, jalapeno that has no heat the same flavor but zero heat and i've got everything all you know washed and ready to go now and usually i use chinese knives and people ask me what i'm using and uh this time i'm going to show you that i do own some old knives and uh this one here is a 50 cent knife i call it it came from a garage sale it looks like it's a hand hand forged knife that's probably hundreds of years old and um you know, it was probably passed down from generation to generation until the last owner died and the kids decided to sell it for um, 50 cents on a 50 cent table at a garage sale. So it is a, you know, it is a great knife and I usually just use it for watermelons, but it's, uh, it must, it's a little bit dull right now. I noticed that, you know, when I started cutting. So after cutting these couple, I just went over and hit it on the steel and, you know, I was able to cut fine with it after that but it is a um you know it's a it's a really old hand hammered it looks like knife so i do have some you know halfway decent knives anyhow i'm just going to chunk these natapinos up and uh you know you don't have to have them even size or anything like that um last year these turned out to uh be the best peppers that we fermented so that's all i'm doing this year uh, the other ones tended to uh, get a little soggy as they got older once we put them in the fridge to store. So there's two jars full of uh, natapinos and looks like I'll be making some poppers this weekend with the rest of them. So now it's time to get some garlic. Um, this is our homegrown garlic and I'm just going to take a clove of it and just kind of chop it coarsely and... First you peel it, and then I'm going to just chop it and put one in each jar here just for a little bit of extra flavor. I found out that, you know, this was the flavor that we like. So I'm just, uh, you know, showing you what worked out good for us last year. So I just put one garlic clove in each jar. And then it's time to make up the uh, brine that's apparently contains some salt just to kill some of the bad bacteria in the 
fermenting. So, uh, what I understand, any iodized uh, salt on iodized salt will work, and I use a kosher salt here, and I put two tablespoons per quart. You can cut that back to um, you know about one tablespoon if you want, but I I I found out the two worked the best for us and gave the best flavor. So that's what I'm sticking with. And then it's a matter of just submerging the uh, not a pino pepper slices in the brine here. And I started out by doing it the wrong way. I, I started out by overfilling everything because you see once I put those weights in it's a little too much brine so I had to dump some out. You want it to be down about three quarters of an inch from the top. And some of these things can get going pretty uh, fermenting pretty violently and uh, you know come squirting out that through the vent and the top there so you know it's a good good thing to leave them a little bit lower and also put them in something that can catch anything that uh, may come out so just screw the tops on tight and then there's a little pump to just remove any air that's left in there put a little bit of a vacuum on them until they get going and you know then they'll start bubbling out these tops are actually just air locks so there's a you know first two jars of the nata pinos, and there's a tray I'm going to put them on that uh, will catch anything that comes bubbling out. And I found out that's not an option last year that you do have to do that because some jars just go wild. And it's time to wash the handful of beans that I got, and I'm just going to break the two ends off. Now if the two ends don't snap off real easy and uh, clean, you just throw the bean away because. Uh, it's not it's not a good one especially when you get to the end of the season beans like this so I got the beans all trimmed down and I'm just gonna throw them in another wide mouth jar here just very just just about had enough I could have used a couple more but you know quantity doesn't matter and same thing I'm going to uh, throw a uh, couple cloves of garlic in here I'm gonna just peel it and just chop it coarsely and I'm putting two two in this and uh, same brine I'm using a quart of water and two tablespoons of salt so I use that you know the same one on everything And like I said, it doesn't have to be kosher salt. It could be sea salt. It could be pickling salt. Just anything that's not iodized. And then one of those heads of dill is going to go in there to give it some real good dill flavor. Stir that up good and uh, fill the jar up. Make sure that everything is, you know, submerged. And I can't even pour from a measuring cup. You can see I make a mess. That's I have to make sure my wife's not in the kitchen when I do this. And then just a matter, I overfilled it again. So someday I'll learn. And screw the lid on, and then just pump the air out. So it's nice having these, uh, you know, these lids and this little air pump and stuff as a kid. It does, it does, did work out good for me last year and got me going in this and. Uh, you know, it's one of those things you always do. Then those little those little carrots I thinned out. I'm just going to start by trimming off the all the greens from them, and uh, you know, just cutting a tip off that's really not good. Now speed it up here a little bit. And these these are really super sweet little carrots too at this point in time. So now I'm going to leave the skins on them. So what you have to do is uh, I have a little vegetable brush that I just take and really wash them good so that there's no dirt or anything left in the cracks on these things. And just get them all cleaned up really good. Now, uh, last year I found out that the best way to do them is to slice them. I tried some of these whole and I tried some sliced ones and turned out that the... The whole ones didn't quite ever get fermented in the center. It took forever, and um, you know the outer outside of them would have the flavor, but they didn't get the flavor through quick enough for me. So, you know, I like them sliced, and that's the way I do them from now on. So I'm just gonna, you know, kind of coarsely slice these up here. 
And I will say, with those tomatoes and uh, garlic cooking down on the stove, it smells just like an Italian restaurant in here now. It's just fantastic. So you can see that handful of carrots gave me enough to get two jars going. And one of the jars I'm going to uh, do plain. And the other jar I'm actually going to uh, add dill to. So I'm just going to divide them up into two jars, try to, you know, split them up. And I just did pick enough of them, so, you know, that was good. So you can really see just how easy it is to get going. And, you know, once this stuff is fully fermented, you throw it in a... I just put the regular mason lids on, and I vacuum peel them, and I just throw it in a, my, our spare refrigerator. And, you know, it'll stay for months. So I put the piece of dill in that one. You can see I'm going to add a little dill flavor to those carrots. And then I'm just going to put garlic in there too. And the other one I'm just going to kind of leave plain. Because the carrots do have a great flavor, you know, without a lot of extras. So same thing. I'm using the same brine. And whenever I run out, I just mix up another, another um, quart of it there in that measuring cup. So this time I'm gonna I'm gonna do it the right way and I'm gonna stop filling the brine a little bit low there you can see just so I don't have a big mess again and then just go back and drop in the uh, the glass hockey pucks here to weight it down and they can turn sideways on you and they're real slippery to grab onto sometimes so. Uh, you, sometimes you need a spoon or something to flip them up, but you know, that's the right way to do it and just throw the lids on the jar now and pull pull the air out whatever you can with that little pump and these will be ready to go too. Got these done and then I had a um, couple cucumbers I picked yesterday that I decided I'm gonna throw in a jar too, so you know again just wash them off good and uh, I use one of these little cucumber scrubbers here to you get all that little prickly things off them and stuff and it doesn't really take many to fill a jar of this stuff and then you can see I got one chopped up in the jar already and I just need one more to to finish it off so I just chunk it up like that and throw it in the jar now these here you have to um, be careful that you catch them at the right time and there goes a piece of dill in the jar I found if you um, let them sit too long in the fermenting, they can get kind of soft and mushy. Uh, you want to, you know, just keep an eye on them. And when they just, uh, you know, have changed color pretty much and they have good flavor, I put them in the fridge and then they'll stay that way. If you leave them out after that, they'll uh, continue to go downhill quickly. So again, I, I need just a little more brine, so I'm only going to make up a half batch of it here to finish off this jar. So there's really, uh, you know, nothing special required or anything for this other than the, the veggies and uh, salt. And some good clean water, too. And again, throw that little weight on there. I top them off to about three quarters down and just put the lid on. So there it is, uh, you know, a couple hours later, everything's in the jar, ready to go. And, you know, I do have them in the tray just in case they do cook over. So um, I'll just take these now and I've got a, a dark, fairly dark spot. You have to keep them about 70 degrees while they're fermenting. And, um, you know, about two weeks, I should have a, a nice uh, tasty batch of fermented veggies. So I just thought I'd, you know, share what has worked out best for us over the past year in the fermenting. And I will put some links down below to this kit because it really was a great kit to get me started. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.